You thought it would never happen, but here it is. It's Spider Tank 3, Part 8. The dates of this episode are between the 19th of December to the 31st of December in the year 2020. The Spider Tank's getting up to about three months at this point here. We're almost to the halfway point of the life of this Spider Tank, where there's only one spider left. And within this enclosed spider tank, we have two sorts of spiders at the moment. There's redback spiders, which were all born as spiderlings into the tank. And about a month ago, I introduced some black house spider spiderlings into the tank just to mix things up. Before we get too excited, I better put up a boring warning that the warning has been removed. And that appeases the systems that are there to protect us and hound producers on YouTube. And at the start here, we're looking up at the ring. There's a ring set up in the tank. And you, I can see a maturing female red-backed spider. I can also see some black house spider spiderlings. They do look quite different, these two spiders, once you get your eye in. But I can also see the black house spiders are having a bit of a hard time against the red-backed spiders in the spider tank. I'll put a red circle around the part where you need to see. I'll always try and do that because... Sometimes it's not that obvious and we are always looking at what are very, very small little things in the spider tank. Now the point of putting the black house spiderlings in the spider tank was to really test to see how much trouble they would give the red back spiders because I can see around my own home, wherever you have black house spiders and are a very common spider around the home, you never see a red back spider within QE of the black house spiders are actually quite a fearsome dominant spider. And they get great numbers up as well in the right conditions. The black house spiders are fairly reclusive. They're good to have around your home. They do a lot of cleaning up of the bugs and critters that could invade your home. And they've got a very, very good web system where the bugs get trapped in the web. And then the black house spider will come along and give it a good venom bite. And the next thing is that bug is the black house spider's meal. I've actually been keeping an eye on a black house spider that's living inside a garbage truck toy on the kitchen windowsill and it's been amazing to see how this spider operates. Normally they're operating at night in darkness, they're not a spider you see out during the day, but the times that I've caught this spider capturing something in the web, it's a very effective killer and I'll tell you what, its venom acts very fast. I was quite surprised how fast whatever gets caught in this web gets knocked out by the black house spider. And years ago I used to speak about red back spiders residing in the toys in the backyard, Tonka trucks and anything that was metallic and hot and warm and friendly for them. Well look at this, the black house spider also likes living in toys so anything that's laying around and neglected can often become just a spider nest for whatever opportunistic spiders around. And just on the thought of being opportunistic there are two ways to survive in spider tank 3. You either are an opportunistic type spider or you're an aggressive type spider and we see going on here what started out as being a small melee that's ended up attracting a lot of other spiders and one of the larger what looks like female redback spiders has come along and decided to take advantage of what was going on i believe the bulk of the spiders involved here are redback spiders there are some larger male redback spiders in the tank by this stage they've got what looks like two little pom-poms at the front of them or baubles where the female doesn't have that feature and you can just see how manic it starts to get when there's an opportunity for a meal remembering at this point here the only meal in spider tank 3 is the other spiders in the spider tank as i've seen over and over in spider tank 3 the more aggressive spiders who take the big risk in capturing another spider for a meal are the ones who seem to be progressing forward, although you do have the other style of spider in here that will come in and basically clean up and get the seconds and third meal going on when one spider has finished feeding. At this point in the spider tank, the more mature spiderlings can be seen as being male and female, and I'm pretty sure over and over I've seen the females being the aggressor. They're the ones who are taking the risk, getting the meal first up, and I'm yet to see a male redback spider being the one that initiates a melee which will become your next meal. They seem to be the passive ones in the tank, whereas the female redback spiders seem to be the most aggressive 
from what I've seen up to this point. The black house spider spiderlings seem to be very reclusive. They are hovering around the ring area. They've got their own little zones, and a lot of the spiders here do have zones, but they are still clumping together, and they seem to get caught out when they go out all by themselves. There'll be a red-backed spider who'll take advantage of that. At this point in Spider Tank 3, we're at a stage where if a spider makes a mistake, it's going to be their last mistake. There's really no second or third chances going on. You make a mistake here, you're going to become another spider's meal really fast. And looking at the lower deck on Spider Tank 3, well, I can see a maturing female redback spider, but I can also see a lot of little black dots across the floor. And what that indicates to me is spiderlings that didn't progress to the next stage. And we're at a point in the spider tank where if you're still an active and growing spider in the spider tank, you've had a good chow down on something that's laying on the floor of the spider tank. The redback spiders are finding their zones. And this is an important thing because once a spider sets up a zone, it will protect the zone. And from what I can see, the redbacks have chosen all different areas in the spider tank. Some have got a zone up near the top ring. I can also see a spider skin up there as well. So obviously as a spider grows, they shed their skin to get to the next phase. And others have set up zones down the bottom. And one very neat area to set up a zone is near the spot where the spiders come and get a drink. Yes, there's water in there for the spiders to drink. And the spiders who set up in that area there, I thought were very clever. And maybe another thing that's going on at this point, the redback spider egg sacs that opened up later in the spider tank have almost become cannon fodder because they've got the more mature redbacks in there which have really taken advantage of the situation. And a big challenge for me in recording Spider Tank 3 is taking a gamble sometimes and going in close on something, hoping something will happen in front of the camera. A lot of the time, there are things going on in the background which are out of focus that we're not seeing clearly, but all the time there's something going on at some area in a Spider Tank. It's an extremely dynamic zone at the moment. In the next few episodes, it really starts to change and becomes a very different spider tank versus what you see here. And it's almost like the spider tank gets to a cliff edge and the population of spiders in the tank just plummets to just a few. It's quite interesting how fast the population dies off when we get to a certain point. Next bit of footage is quite curious. There's a female spiderling there and also a male spiderling. We can clearly see it's a male now. Another spider comes in near the female, she reacts and then goes round near the male spider, and the male spider does next to nothing. We might look at this a couple of times because it does show the difference in attitude between a female redback spiderling and the male redback spiderling. The female reacts, the male just sits there doing not much at all. Mind you, saying male spiderling might be wrong because this male might be at adult size now. They don't live for very long. If it's a spider from the first egg sac that opened in Spider Tank 3, well, it's three months old, and the males live for about six to seven months. And maybe the most interesting aspect to this is that the males are wriggling their way through, and they are survivors in the spider tank, because I really would have thought by this stage, the females would have wrapped them up once they've done their one duty to them. It's almost like there's a secret spider law where the females will allow some males to just exist and not be taken out as a meal. The males must be feeding to get to this point, but I don't see them being aggressive. I see the females being aggressive and grabbing meals all the time. It's quite remarkable to see the males so mature at this point. And thinking about aggressive female redback spiders and the way they work, remember the smart one who had the home above where the water is? Well, a little spiderling came down thinking, I'm going to get a drink. But sadly, that drink never came. All that happened was it became the next meal for that very clever female redback spider who is picking off spiders one by one as they come and get a thirsty little drink. What a clever little girl. I'll finish with what the ball camera could see in Spider Tank 3. I looked for the largest spiders in the spider tank. The biggest spiders at this time are males. Their leg spread is almost filling up the whole frame here. They're quite impressive to look at. 
They're a tad boring in the spiders don't move around that much when you want them to. I also picked off some of the larger females that I could find, which are quite nice to look at. I also saw what looked like a transparent cloud of spider skins, and that's actually from the black house spiders. They like to live together in clumps. They are in the tank, but they are very elusive, and they hide around the white ring, which is at the top of the tank. I could also see a spiderling feeding on another spiderling. It could be a female redback spiderling. It's quite young, unknown what it's feeding on. Maybe you're really clever and can ID what it's sucking to nothing. But it's nice to see it up close through the ball camera. It's just something different. So do you have a feel for who is going to be the final spider in this spider tank? I have got the footage of the final two spiders and one taking out the other. I know what happens at the end. But can you tell which way this is going to bend? I'm certainly not going to give you any clues. All I can say is I learned a lot about redback spiders witnessing what happens at the end of Spider Tank 3.